Hello, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am Alana. This is Jamie. What is new with you, Jamie? It is cold. It is no, it is really, Salt Lake City cold. Yeah, it is. And I know the the word cold is definitely not the same definition uh -huh. as Alaska cold at the moment. Like I think we're in the. It hasn't frozen a whole lot like i think it's in the 30s 40s okay stuff like that so it's not not cold by anchorage standards or alaska huh. standards at this time of year but we're getting frost we had to make sure to winterize the trailer you know don't want any any bursting pipes or anything so we're getting there we had right. um, we have snow on the mountains i i found out that you know for those that don't know in alaska we call the first like dusting of snow on the mountains mm. we call it termination dust we always had a termination dust tournament in hockey oh around fun that time so we get termination dust on the mountains and it actually is very reminiscent of what it looks like in the Anchorage Bowl. Okay. Um, uh -huh. And we now the mountains are covered with snow around us and it's just looking like more like winter. It feels like fall outside mm -hmm. most of the time during the day, but in the mornings, it feels like winter, like it's got that winter smell. So uh -huh. yeah, so it'll be winter. interesting to know like this 30 degrees in utah feel a lot different than 30 degrees in anchorage you know because so much the humidity the wind it all can impact yeah so it. i mean the heat does not feel the same we were here it was 90s up to hundreds over the summer and it's not the same anchorage like mm -hmm. a, you know, an alaska 80 was oppressive mm -hmm. for several it days is. at a time mm -hmm. and here 80 is like nice ambient weather but right. the other thing that I don't take into consideration is we have air conditioning here and uh -huh. homes in Anchorage. I don't think most of them had air conditioning mm -hmm. or at least ours didn't. We just, yeah. No, so, it's not a common thing. Yeah. So it is a little different, but that's interesting with the cold so far to me, it feels colder when it's mm -hmm. warmer, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know what the current temperature is, but I would guess it's probably about, you know, that this morning it was like 39 or 40, you know, like in the high 30s, low 40s. And in Anchorage, I always used to feel like that was, that could be short sleeve weather to me hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. compared yeah. to like super cold. So it feels colder to me when it's warmer mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in the winter, whereas it feels, oh, but that's the same in the summer. It feels colder okay. in the summer then the temperature reflects. Yeah. Yeah. I kind say of that's resets a, it by 10 degrees or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> that's interesting. How about well, you guys? I, What's going on in Alana land? We had our first really big snow. We had snow day in, I think it was, yeah, November hadn't even started yet. But it's snow. It's nice. It's pretty. We're not getting the real extreme dark yet. So that's nice. We're usually in the 20s. We've been in single digits, but uh, like 20s and no wind and pretty snow around. It's kind of gorgeous. <laughs> so I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, my favorite was like the when when the fog would come through. I don't know if they mm -hmm. have that here or not, but I know in Alaska, the fog would come through and frost all the trees. I, mm -hmm. I think there's a word for it, but or it frost. was uh-huh oh yeah okay so, H -O -A -R, yeah. yeah yeah I loved that that was so pretty and I remember one Christmas I just thought like this is this is what all the Christmas decorations try to look mm -hmm. like you know like mm -hmm. all of the the things that you put around like with the trees and the whatever yeah. but yeah it's all like crystally and pretty it is yeah like the individual branches and twigs are all glistening I saw mm -hmm. a spider web with some hoar frost on it outside once it was beautiful or spider <laughs> oh, i'm sure the spider's fine <laughs> the spider's fine the spider was meant to live in the outdoors the spider That's is cool. doing great i checked in on him just yesterday <laughs> well it's so ironic because i have a i have a lessening as i get older arachnophobia that i've i've gotten mm -hmm. under control but I still get a visceral reaction with certain types of spiders. I don't yeah. know what the deal is like, but certain spiders will give me a reaction. But I also have a deep like concern for them. 
I That's love hilarious. Them. I hate killing spiders. Maybe it's just because I know that they kill mosquitoes and harmful insects and they're, yeah. you know, good for the world, but but I hate killing them and I actually like I don't know, even more so than other bugs. I've just got this thing about it's like a love hate with spiders. I don't know. I don't know what it means. I'm deeply conflicted. I might need to go see a counselor about it. That's right. <laughs> to work out your feelings about spiders. Well, I know Scott and I love spiders. Like we think they're cute, but and, and we don't have dangerous spiders up here. So right. and that we don't have very large easier. spiders. So they're not like creepy and gross. They're like, oh, here's our little buddy that's gonna eat the mosquitoes. It really right. is, it really is that well, and with the added thing that you know mosquitoes are the state bird of alaska in a bad way yes and so you mm -hmm. want them eaten um, you want them have, yeah have you i know i've talked about this because it's my favorite thing ever but if anyone has not heard this tune in have you seen the video you might have even sent it to me no yeah. i think my friend becca sent it so there's a video of a i think it's a wolf spider and uh -huh. it has like all of this fuzz tangled around its legs like uh -huh. cotton or something yeah. No, it's just dust. It's like it, the guy found it like under a dryer or something and it uh -huh. had all of this like fuzz. Yeah. So he trapped it in a box and he took these tweezers oh, and uh -huh. the video is of this spider in the box. And at first it kind of skitters away. Ooh, uh -huh. like just thinking about that gives me the creeps. Right. But it like goes away. But when it's almost like he starts taking the cotton and the like the, the lint off of its uh -huh. legs. And it sits there, it lifts one of its legs Aww. as he pulls. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like, it just makes you wonder, do they have this intelligence that we don't know about? But it's just very heartwarming. And for a person, like when I'm scrolling, my kids love to find pictures of spiders and hand me the phone and say, mom, look at this. Aww, and I'll look at it mean. and it's, it's super mean, but in good fun. And I do usually scream a little, but... I love, I was mesmerized by this video. So look up wolf spider with lint being taken off of its Yeah, that sounds be able fascinating. To find it. it is yeah. so cool. Yeah. I'm sure Scott would enjoy that too. Yeah. We, yeah. we really like our spiders. <laughs> God's creatures, you know. Come on God's in. Yeah. Go live, go live in the basement. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> Cobwebs? No, those are mosquito traps. <laughs> That's right. Oh, well, I'm excited that we are so far into Proverbs 31 by now. So we're not quite wrapping it up, but we're close to at least the last few verses. Our track record is that we do like one verse. And then I think this one, we're going to do both verses though, because they kind of go together. So we're in the last four verses. So these are the second to the last two. <laughs> yep. Yep. So starting at verse 28, it says, her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. So I want to know our just for fun today is going to be the biggest or sweetest compliment you've gotten from one of your kids or from your husband, or just one that really stands out in your memory. Oh, man. Do you need I a minute? Well, I think, yeah, I, well, I just, I remember, so we do this thing at like birthdays or special occasions, we'll go around and say things that we appreciate, like Mother's Day, mm -hmm. Father's Day, stuff like mm -hmm. that, what we appreciate about the person that's being honored. And so I just, I, I think I remember like our oldest is not like words of affirmation are not his mm -hmm. thing. He doesn't, I mean, for him, he likes to receive them, but he's not uh -huh. very vocal and mushy gushy, you know, he's very right. practical and, you know, uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. but I remember, I think it was maybe mother's day last year or something. And I just remember that he said, he said something about, I don't know if it, if the word was kind, it wasn't kind, but it was something like that. But mm -hmm. he just said something like, you know, like, you know, mom is the kindest person I've ever met or generous. It was, it was generous. Aww. And, and he kind of expounded on it. And, but I just remember coming from him, like, it's not even the words it's the, it's mm -hmm. kind of who it's coming from can also do it, but oh, coming from sure. him when, you know, he's very grateful and a good kid and all, and he's very, you know, he, he's not like, but he just doesn't express those kinds of things in words very often. And so I just thought that was very meaningful yeah 
That's cool. I think of my youngest, he's in high school now, but you know, still feels sometimes like the baby, even though like he's, how is that possible that he's in high school? And he and Scott have always had a like cute, like, you know, they like to wrestle. They like to insult each other playfully. And it totally reminds me of like lion cubs with the big old lions. You know what I mean? Except now they're both like, you know, one's a big lion and one's just a medium, like almost full size lion. So it's changing. But our youngest really gets into the like, I'm going to defend mom, you know? So if they're joking with each other until they're like, what'd you just say about my mom or things like that? And so that's pretty cute. I had that is to- sweet find a a quote my friend Mackenzie so people have heard her she's been on the podcast before she and I did a recording about how reading Christian fiction can impact your prayer life and then she and I do some book chats about my fiction and she and her husband are the youth leaders at our church and so they've got a really close relationship they both do especially with our youngest so she sent me this text So the backstory is our kids really liked reading the Percy Jackson books growing up. And Athena is the mythological goddess of like wisdom. And in the Percy Jackson books, if you're a child of Athena, you have gray eyes and like you're really, really smart is kind of how it goes. So this is what Mackenzie sent me. She said, we were talking about Percy Jackson And my son said, I used to tell people I had gray eyes because my mom was really smart. So I thought she might be Athena. Oh, that is so cute. I thought that was pretty adorable. (laughs) That is very neat. I love that. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good reminder that our words can just breathe life and uplift. Like if I were to ask you, what's the most painful thing your husband has ever said to you? It would probably not take as much time for a lot of us to answer as what's the kindest thing, right? That someone has ever said to you. And that's just a reminder that the the positive words we speak don't carry the same emotional weight. And so you kind of need to overdo it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I feel like it's also a reminder on the receiving end. I, I don't know. I kind of get uncomfortable when people say nice things and I kind of brush it off Mm -hmm. almost like, Ooh, I don't want to dwell too much on that. And I don't want to sit in that. But, but my husband sometimes gets frustrated because he's just like, he's like, you know, accept what I'm saying. Like, I want you to know and accept it. Mm -hmm. Don't just brush it off and make an excuse or, you know, but it's just a reminder for us to also Like you said, because when you asked me that question, like you said, it's kind of hard to think back, but I feel Mm kind of bad about that because I know that there are nice things and like very kind things that are said, but I don't kind of make Ebenezer's out of those things. You Mm -hmm. know, I don't like Mm -hmm. say, hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So I I just, it's a reminder to me also to receive those things and make note of them and incorporate them into myself. Not that... I think there's a danger with people pleasers to rely only on the positive things of others and not believing Mm -hmm. in yourself. But at the same time, Mm -hmm. I think incorporating those things in and, and taking them at face value and not just saying, Oh, they're just saying that because that's, it's like someone giving you a gift and you just putting it on the shelf and being like, Oh yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you're worried about it feeling like it could lead to pride or overconfidence, I love the idea of taking a compliment and just reflecting it up to God. So as soon as it comes in, so I could say like, Jamie, you have such amazing spiritual insight into scripture. And I really love and admire that about you. I admire that about myself as well. See, perfect. Congratulations, everyone. Like (laughs) round of applause for Jamie for being able to accept a compliment, even though I know you were joking. I was joking. (laughs) But it probably like was your initial reaction to be like, oh, okay, whatever. Like you you just want to hurry through it, gloss over it, right? Oh yeah, no. Or make a joke about it because it's like, (laughs) oh, Yeah. So if you're not to the point where you're ready to like accept those words and like really feel them kind of for yourself and help them to give you like encouragement, then, then you can still graciously project them up to God 
and be like, God, I don't get what she's saying, but hey, there must be something that you're doing because I know it's not coming from me that someone would say this kind of thing to me, right? So learning yeah, well, to graciously accept a compliment, learning to graciously accept praise. I think I've told you about my violin teacher and the bowing kind of thing, right? Did we talk about refresh, that? Refresh our memory. We spent I... a lot of time learning how to graciously bow yes, at the end of our performance yes, yes. because the 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 knee-jerk response would be like okay I put down my violin I'm going to kind of like do a little dip and then like I want to get off the stage as fast as I can mm -hmm. but basically it was you stand you and so if if you are the kind of woman who has a very hard time accepting a compliment I want you to picture yourself you've just given this beautiful performance or whatever it is that you have a hard time accepting praise for. And people are clapping. She has you like stand, your shoulders aren't like, you're not making yourself smaller. Right. You're not puffed up either though, right? <laughs> you were just, you're there and you, you don't rush through it. You mindfully and thoughtfully and with a sense of both like humility and dignity, you give your bow because that's your way of accepting the gift that they've given you, right? You gave them the gift of your music or whatever it is. They're giving you the gift of praise through, in this case, through applause. You need to graciously accept that gift or it it is, it's rude, it's insulting, it's not humble. It's, it's very, you know, like at the end of a, a show, if there's no curtain call, the audience has no way to kind of give back to the performer like that. That doesn't feel like a full circle, right? It feels like something's missing. And so being able to just like slowly, okay, you, you bow, you come up, you pause. If they're still clapping just as heartily as they were before you do it again. Right. And, and it just, it can feel awkward, but there's also, I think there is humility in learning how to accept that because you kind of recognize I'm not accepting this to make myself feel really, really, really puffed up and amazing. I am accepting this because the audience had an emotional response to my performance and I need to acknowledge that, right? So it would be like if I I wrote a book, you read the book and loved it. So everybody think about your very, very favorite author who's still alive or at least, you know, has written in the last at least in this century. A lot of dairy. You, of course. You <laughs> you write them a letter or an email or you send them a DM and you're like, your books meant so much to me. I just wanted you to know. There is a graciousness in being able to accept that, to not have it like really even touch your ego, right? But it still is. So it's not, yeah, I know I'm your favorite author, Jamie. Why do you even bother telling me and wasting my time with your words? But it's just, again, kind of that reflecting it back up to God of like, oh, okay, well, this obviously couldn't have come just for me to have done this. So I'm going to lift it up to God and I'm going to say thank you to you because you took time out of your day to do that. When I coach authors, we talk about what do you owe your readers? And I think the only thing that an author owes the reader is just some respect and some gratitude, right? Like we don't owe them free books. We don't owe them signed copies just because they asked, but we do owe them some respect, right? And so if, and, and part of respecting somebody is learning how to accept a compliment. So I think that we have this notion that if I can't accept a compliment, that must mean I'm very humble. But I think it's way, I don't even think they're on the same plane. They're not. Right? I think like no. pride and humility are a totally separate thing. I almost picture being able to accept a compliment. That's that's almost more like a spirit of gratitude and a spirit of just openness and receptiveness. It's mm -hmm. So if you're worried that compliments are going to puff up your brain, I think that, you know, it's it's almost like saying, oh, if I, I'm trying to think of something that's like a total non sequitur, like, oh, if I call and talk to the phone on Jamie, I'm going to gain weight, right? Like th they don't really impact <laughs> each other. Well, before we get too much deeper, why don't we open up in a word of prayer and then we can continue on in our discussion. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this 
chance to be together again and discuss your word. We just pray that you would help us to just be brought into a place where we're hearing from you. I just pray that you would quiet our spirits, quiet our minds, whatever we've had going on in the first part of our day. We just pray that you would help us to leave that and and just come into your presence and receive what you have for us today through your word. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you for Proverbs 31, for this celebration of women. And we just pray for your wisdom, for your insight into how we can apply these truths into our lives, how we can release any wrong thinking about Proverbs 31 and just open ourselves up to a right understanding of who you see us to be and who we are in Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, where else do you want to go in this passage? Well, I really, so her children arise in color, bless her husband also, and he praises her. Just along the lines of humility, I feel like in my life, some of my issues with not being able to accept compliments or not being able to accept praise, it come from the wrong way of looking at what is being praised. And it's almost the opposite of humility. Like you were saying, mm -hmm. being able to accept, a, like being prideful and being not able to accept a compliment are, are not related really. And mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think, I think it's a right, being right with who I am in relation to God. So if I am looking at my, my accomplishments as my own or the perceived accomplishments mm -hmm. that other people see, if I'm looking at those as mine and then, then it is kind of hard because I don't want that attention on myself. I think honestly, deep down, cause I've thought a lot about this. I'm a little bit afraid that someone's going to disagree with that and think mm -hmm. I don't deserve that label of whatever it is the person's mm -hmm. putting on me. So I want to kind of push past it and be, and, and just be like, mm, yeah, I, I don't want anyone to hear you saying that because what if they think I'm the opposite or not that mm -hmm. and not deserving mm -hmm. of it. But what I think we need to do is I think there's a, a disconnect because what I need to think of is, and what I try to do and what I've hopefully grown in along those lines is seeing the compliment or the, the good thing that someone's seeing in me as a gift that God has given me as part of my right. uniqueness in, in mm -hmm. his creation. And I mean, we, ha we, all we talk about these days is how unique each woman is and the celebration of womanhood isn't the celebration mm -hmm. of a cookie cutter June right. Cleaver. It's the right. celebration of all of womanhood, which is just like the scripture that talks about there are many members of the body and mm -hmm. one can't work without the other. And God has created us all in the body of Christ as individuals with different gifts. So the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you and vice versa, mm -hmm. or, you know, the, yeah, the hair follicle or the spleen, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> these underappreciated body parts, right? You know, but basically, I think when we look at ourselves as one small piece of the body of Christ and of womanhood, and then we can appreciate that, oh, wow, you know, my son said this great thing about me, or Alana said this great mm -hmm. thing about me. Um, I, like you said, like reflecting it back to God can look like saying, Thank you, God, for giving me that strength and even saying, how can mm -hmm. I cultivate that? Like if someone right. sees that, that little thing in me, you know, someone sees that mm -hmm. piece of who you've made me to be, what are some ways I can cultivate that, you know, with the gratitude that my son said, not gratitude, generosity, like how can yeah. I cultivate that? Like what are areas and, and I can start to think, you know what, generosity and, and giving like that brings me great joy. How can I? Mm -hmm capitalize on that and maybe stop dabbling in these things, these areas that don't bring me joy that I'm right. striving so hard to be like yeah. Jane down the, down the street. Right. Why don't I find ways that I can capitalize on these things that bring me joy in the way that God has created me? So. Yeah, that's a really neat, I think that we can actually, yeah, 
take the compliments. I'm going to guess that even the compliments that are hardest for you to accept might be because they do hit closer to home. Like if I didn't care at all, if I was able to like, I don't know, stand on my tiptoes without losing my balance. Like to me, that's who cares if somebody can or can't do that. And if someone came it's like, I saw you standing on your tiptoes for, you know, this long, that was amazing. I'd be like, thanks. And like, I would never think about it again. I didn't like, right. oh, it was weird. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, or if, you know, someone maybe they're like, you parked your car really well. To me, parking my car has zero to do with like how I identify myself. So I might think it's a little weird, but I'm not going to like fixate on that. I'm not going to be like, were they lying to me? Maybe... Or am I going to get proud because someone gave me a compliment about how I, you know, like it's just not going to land because I don't care. And so the the compliments that maybe are the hardest for you to accept, I would do a little bit of dig digging and probing like, oh, well, maybe, maybe you don't want to accept it because it's scary to you. Maybe it truly is a gift and you're afraid that by accepting someone's compliment, that you're taking glory away from God, where it totally doesn't have to be that way. But, you know, if you're kind of floundering, like you don't know your calling, you don't know your spiritual gifting, you don't really know the purpose of the season of life that you're in right now. I would just ask yourself, okay, if I were to get some pretty candid compliments from people like, let's do this way, family, social life, your church and your workplace, Right. What would those four groups, if you're, you know, if, if all of those groups apply to you, like what would be a common compliment? And then you could almost extrapolate that like, oh, what, what is this telling me about myself? Because like, if I told you, Jamie, I think you have some really amazing insight into the Bible. And I think you're really able to communicate that well to people who don't have the gift of studying that you do. A, you might be like, oh, well, it's not really a gift because I, I can just do it, right? Like, and that's the definition of a gift and you just do it. That's um, true. That's, yeah, because there are things where people say, oh, that's cool that you're this, this or that. And you're just like, well, that, okay, but true. it doesn't take work. I haven't worked hard at it. Right. I haven't slaved over. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good it, point. Yeah. It would be like, wow, Jamie, you're doing really well being pregnant, right? Like that's not really how we say it. Cause it just like, it just happens. Right? It just right? happens. It's not like, <laughs> but isn't that the definition of God's gifting? Yes. It's nothing that you've done, nothing you like yes. earned. He just, he has given you this and yeah. it's almost like accepting, you know, like acknowledging like, yeah, thank you for, yeah. For I the think gift the baby that God analogy. Has given you. Yeah, the baby analogy can take us farther in that I don't think there are, there's hardly any brand new mom. So picture yourself, you're here holding your newborn, a friend or loved one comes in and they say, what a beautiful baby. Most of us have zero problem saying thank you because we know we had nothing to do. Our, our conscious mind had nothing to do with making our baby beautiful, right? And so, yes, technically it was your cells. It was your body. It was your energy. <laughs> like. But since it wasn't, it's not a talent to make a beautiful baby or, you know, or to produce a healthy baby. That's not a talent that we can take credit for. And so most of us have zero qualms about saying thank you if somebody tells us we have a beautiful baby. And I feel like we can accept praise about other things just like that. I could be like, Jamie, you did an amazing job setting up your office and it doesn't have to be like, oh, she doesn't know that on this side of the room, I've got all these boxes and she didn't see how bad it used to look. And, you know, it could just be, thank you. Like, what kind of terrible mom would you be if I came in and said, what a beautiful baby? And like, oh, yeah, but look at this ugly birthmark they got, you know, or something. That's horrible. Yeah, no, it's yeah, that is that is definitely. And I just think cultivating just just cultivating the ability to accept positive feedback something i've tried doing is within my family like where it's safe with my kids i will like i've caught myself testing out not even just accepting compliments but saying things i do well mm -hmm. in front of them because they're safe people just in case like if you just find that it's hard to do it in 
you know, it's kind of like read to a dog to practice reading. Yeah. So you're, you're <laughs> like, calling your children dogs. They are absolutely, I love them <laughs> just as much as I love our dog. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. But it's read to a dog, you know, so that you get used to reading. But, you know, yes. in the presence in of safe, safe people, like mm -hmm. I remember I, I, I am a little bit proud of my, it's funny parking that you mentioned it because I'm kind oh, of proud hilarious. of my parallel parking ability <laughs> Nice, <laughs> because I do not have a lot of spatial awareness. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not a great driver. Yeah. I'm not a great yeah. whatever. But I can, for whatever reason, God has given me the gift of <laughs> parallel parking. <laughs> so I remember teaching our oldest how to parallel park. And he was like, yeah, I heard this is really hard. And are you sure you want, uh -huh. you want dad to maybe help me with this? Uh... And I, was like, I was like, I'm actually really good at parallel parking. And yeah. saying it out loud, like there was something really freeing about it. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, I parallel parked and he's like, wow, you really are. And I, don't, I think now that I look back, I actually, my instructor that taught me how had this like system of how to do it and mm -hmm. I use it like, and, mm -hmm. and so really that was kind of a gift given to me by right. the instructor. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, my instructor said this, so use this trick and mm -hmm. it works every time. And he, you know, but it was just, if you're, if, if you aren't able to acknowledge some of these gifts that God has given you, <laughs> like parallel parking, uh -huh. <laughs> um, practice maybe acknowledging them in front of safe people. And you could mm -hmm. even start it off by saying, you know what, I am so bad at accepting compliments, but this would be a great teachable moment for your kids to, to say, I want to give God the glory for the good things. So if you, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on this, on being able to mm -hmm. accept a compliment better. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's a little like practice. I'm still not good at it. But it's, and I think as parents, I think it's a great gift we can give our kids to show them. Like, I think that displaying that kind of false humility that cannot accept a compliment does our kids so much disservice. It's not teaching them humility. It's giving them like crippling self-doubt for the rest of their lives. So yeah, being able to accept that kind of thing make it a joke if you need to like kind of like what you did yeah I am great at this you know that can that can be another kind of stepping stone and you just you don't have to make it weird right some people are going to in the same way that you're so good about asking like hey can I pray for you and it feels so natural some people are going to be great when they receive a compliment they say hey that was a beautiful solo you sang and they say thank you so much all glory to God like it was all him and and it's authentic and it's heartfelt. Someone else could say just about the exact same thing and it just comes off as like, oh, that was weird. So like, so don't push it, right? If if, right. if you're the no, kind of person point. who wants to vocally reflect that Thanksgiving back to God, do it. And if that feels really weird to you, then do it in your spirit, right? But just give the thank you. And, and yeah, see if you can detach yourself from it. Because like- parallel parking doesn't have a ton of spiritual <laughs> relevance to our lives. And a lot of things that we hold on to is pretty precious are kind of like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like, Hey, I mean, isn't this a cool convenient gift that God made me able to parallel park? And that can be it. And then you don't have to go, Oh, but maybe I'm actually a really bad parker and everyone's too scared to tell me, or maybe God's really mad at me for being proud of the way I park. So I'm going to get into this horrible crash the next time I try. Like, it could just be, yeah, thanks. I have some reason I can parallel park really well. Like in my family, I'm known as the Tetris queen. So if we need to fit a bunch of stuff in the fridge and there's no way to make it fit, I will go in and be like, no, let, let me show you all how to get this fit in <laughs> here. Let me show you how it's done. You know, and, and it doesn't have to be, I can own the fact that I'm really good at figuring out how to make efficient use of a space. That doesn't mean I look down on people who don't. It doesn't mean I'm horrible and puffed up with pride. It, it is what it is. It doesn't mean that I wake up every day. I'm like, I can't wait to show my family how well I can, you know, <laughs> stack these boxes in the closet, but it is a gift. And so I'm going to use it when it blesses my family to do it, you know? So sometimes mm -hmm. it could just 
kind of be a lot simpler than we make it. And I think kind of the flip side of taking a compliment well, which I also struggle with sometimes is either false humility or self-deprecation, which kind of go together. Mm -hmm. And the self-deprecation, like, so I guess there are a couple of ways you can receive a compliment. You can receive it well and graciously. You can make a joke about it like I did mm. earlier and be like, yeah, I'm great. Or you can self-deprecate or, or have false humility. Like, oh yeah, well, anyone can do that. Or, mm, or it could yeah, almost be like, no. yeah, I parallel parked, but you should see how terribly I merge onto the highway. Do you know what I right. mean? It's, exactly. It's almost like, right. it's like de that's deflection. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And so, but false humility, I forget where, where I heard it maybe you can help me, but I heard someone maybe on a, either a show or maybe mm -hmm. you said it, <laughs> maybe someone, I don't know, but it was false humility is just another way of lying. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just, yeah. you're, you're denying what you know to be true. I mean, if mm -hmm. you truly have humility and you're just like, Oh, God has given me this. Or if you're truly oblivious that you have a gift and you're like, really, you think I'm that, but if you are, and you know, only the person doing it knows it in, deep down inside. If you know that you have a gift or that you did something well and you come back and say, mm, it wasn't that good, that's mm -hmm. false humility. And that is lying. I mean, it's like it's it's and, and it's robbing, I think, God of his glory. Mm -hmm. And we kind of tell ourselves that it's being humble or that it's the right thing. Yeah. But I think we need to expose that for those of us mm -hmm. that are that that are prone to do that as what it is because it makes it less desirable when you see it that way and you it it's what we're doing i mean when i do it it's not because i'm trying to be smug or anything mm -hmm. i'm i'm really trying to do what i think is right which is kind of avoid the compliment but when you shift your thinking and you kind of do a paradigm shift about your gifts like we've talked about i think it makes it easier to say okay to deny that gift is really robbing God of his glory. It's taking his gift mm -hmm. and, and hiding it and putting it on a shelf or denying that it was even given. And I know that's, that could be just one more way that we put more on ourselves, you know, as, which is mm -hmm. not what we want to do, but I just think it's important because I know in my life I've come to realize it as a problem. So if you find yourself yeah. self deprecating or because I think that's can, that can be a defense mechanism too, putting yourself down mm -hmm. about something before someone else has a chance to. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like patting yourself. So like, oh, they don't even have a chance to touch me because I've already addressed that. Uh -huh. and put it out there. Right, so, right. Anyway, all of those things. I think there's just the undercurrent of all of this is celebrate who God made you to be and mm -hmm. and accept it. And I don't know, but I think another yeah. kind, another kind of facet of this verse though, about her children and her husband praising her is it's something that I came across in a commentary where it said your children and your husband, or if you don't have a ch have children or husband, who are the people closest to you in your inner circle who know you the best? Maybe it's mm -hmm. parents, maybe it's best friends, maybe it's siblings. These people see you at your absolute worst. They're the ones that see the, the warts and all, mm. and they still like when they give you a compliment, when they praise you, when they say good things about you, it's even more important and precious because they know the other side, they know that you're not perfect and they're mm -hmm. still calling, calling you these things. So I don't know. I thought that really yeah. hit home for me too. And I think there's a flip side that we need to be aware of and that's not to define our self-worth based on what our husband thinks of us what no. our kids think of us there are husbands who are going to be erroneously critical for your entire life and no matter what you do you cannot wave a magic wand and change that and so if you're reading this as oh in order to be the kind of woman that god would be proud of I need a husband who affirms me, right? We need to know, okay, what comes from me and what comes from somebody else that I have no control over, right? Or, you know, maybe you ha you're in a season where tension with you and a child are really, really high 
And you look at this verse, like my kid's not rising up and calling me blessed. Right. right. They and could again, be estranged. They could be yeah. spreading horrible yeah. things. Yeah. And sometimes that's on them. So ultimately our self-worth does need to come from God, but you know, there's a huge flip side to that. And that is, I liked what you said about false humility can be lying, but it, it can also be just calling others liars. Cause some of us, we truly are unaware Ooh, right? Like, calling other people liars. That's bad. So <laughs> let's say that I'm, I've been leading music at church for over a year now. I still feel really self-conscious. So if someone comes up and it's happened, I like, cause I count it. I'm like, I think it's happened three or maybe four times. I'm like, I really like your voice. The first thing my brain goes to is, oh, they're just trying to make me feel good. Right? Like, oh, they're, this is their way of telling me that I sound horrible, but ain't I sweet for trying, right? Like that's mm, immediately wow. where my brain goes. Yeah. And so basically if you get a compliment and you're convinced it's not true, maybe you're not the liar, but basically like if enough people are saying you're good at something and you absolutely can't believe it, it, it would be the same as if like, yeah, six people came up to me and they're like, Alana, we think you have a drinking problem. That's probably an indication. And if I'm convinced that I don't have a drinky problem, like to an outside looker, that's an indication that one of us is wrong and six of us are right. But if one of us is saying, no, I absolutely cannot sing. And six people are saying, we really like the way her voice sounds. It's it's almost that same thing, right? But so we need to look at that too and be like, okay, is God putting these people in my life to test me? Is God trying to put a stumbling block in front of me? And the minute that I start to think, oh, maybe I am a good singer. Like he, he's just waiting there to zap me with his, his mighty snick. <laughs> or could it actually be that this is God sending me some encouragement because he knows that I could use it, right? And, and again, there's a huge difference between logically being able to accept a compliment and like feeling it in your heart <laughs> from the leading music sample. I don't feel it in my heart at all, but I logically say, okay, th I don't feel like this is true, but I appreciate that they said something kind to me. Maybe they're lying through their teeth. Maybe, you know, maybe there are four people at church who have it out for me and they want to convince me that they really like how I sing and they hate it. Still, isn't that nice of them to try to make me feel good, right? So so even if you're not fully there yet, you can try to find like back back doors into accepting a compliment. Yeah. And even just to say a, a either silently or if it's appropriate out loud, just, oh, thank you, Lord. Like that's such, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, for this encouragement from this person. Mm -hmm. It's almost like yes. this person is a messenger, just like someone that would say, I feel like the Lord really wants me to say something to you. Yeah. It's this mm -hmm. encouragement. Mm -hmm. Like you could think of it as, well, thank you, God. Thank you yeah. for being, you know, you don't know how much I needed that encouragement today. Like that can be a yes. really gracious response if you're uncomfortable being like, yeah, thanks. I am. Right. Good, <laughs> you know, but to say, yeah. Thank you so much. You don't know how much I needed that encouragement today. Thank yeah. you. Like that's a genuine, yeah. like who doesn't need encouragement? So that's, I know. yeah, I know. Or like, Hey, you know, that's the nicest thing anybody said to me in a very long time and, mm -hmm. and to mean it and to know it. And yeah. so if you're still really struggling, like, you know, it's going to take you like <laughs> billions of hours of therapy. Like you're looking at this, like, I am never going to be able to accept a compliment. I think a nice stepping stone is to start giving more compliments because then you understand when you give a compliment, if I compliment you on the way you sing, it's not because I'm so excited for you to fall in your pride and for God to punish you. It's because I like the way you sing, right? And right. so learning how to give a compliment can actually help you receive it a lot better. My friend, I had a, a really good study partner in some of my science classes in college and he invented this game so that like when we just we really needed a study break and we were really having super discouraged so I'm going to make you play this game with me and it's going to feel like awful to you because I remember the first time I played it so it's called I wish I were and we just go back and forth like this. I wish I were Jamie because she has a beautiful fern behind her. And then you need to come back to me. And then like, we just keep on going as, as many times as we can. Oh, that's cool. So, so I say, now, I though. wish yep. I were Alana 
because she is able to juggle so many plates and is incredibly efficient and productive. I wish I were Jamie because she can wear beautiful jewelry and it looks completely like natural on her. I wish I were Alana because she is able to keep plants alive for long periods of time. Yeah, but see, now I'm going to have my buzzer be like, eh, because I think behind that is like, and I know I can't, and that's not the heart of this. No, that's true. Okay, I wish I were Jamie because her her kids love to still like play and interact and hang out with each other. And I think that's really, really cool. I wish I were Alana because she is an amazing author and has published a lot of cool books that I see behind her. <laughs> I've been admiring <laughs> your Kennedy Stern series for this whole, I don't know why today is the day, but I love, yeah, I was looking at that, got an amazing collection of books. Yeah, so how did that feel for you? No, it felt good. It's, yeah, it felt good because, yeah, it's, it's easy to pick things out for like yeah. of other people. Right. And it's kind of fun because like, there's no way that in the, what, 13 years we've known each other or so and been good friends or complimented you on jewelry before. I might've said something like, oh, I like your necklace. Right. And like, that's, and so in a way it's, it's also a forum for me. Like, Hey, I never had the chance to tell you before, but I really think this is cool about you. That's um, neat. That is good. And yeah. you know how much I love being put on the spot. So I I'm know like, you love my it. brain freezes. <laughs> I'm sure I could come up with some really good stuff. If, but that's what I like is the exercise helps you like mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know, just kind of open oils the, the cogs in your brain to be thinking that way. I love yeah. it. I think it's really important. It goes back to what you said about starting with a safe person, right? Like if you and I had just met, it'd be really awkward if you and I had like maybe a passive aggressive kind of like silent love hate frenemy ship it'd be awkward you know so it's got to be with someone you love and trust if you've got kids who are having a horrible time getting along they might hate it but you could <laughs> it might be really bad they might be like you know I love my brother because I I feel good when I picture smuggling him with his pillow in his sleep like you got to be careful <laughs> but <laughs> But this could be a good one, you know, to to take kids who are having a hard time getting along through or, you know, you're getting your daughter ready for homecoming and she's super, super, super nervous. You could start this or just there's some fun scenarios where this really can be a neat exercise. And then how did it feel like accepting the I mean, let's call them compliments. Technically, they weren't like, Jamie, I admire you because but basically they were compliments without being in that format. Did that feel okay accepting them? Yeah, it felt okay. I think that what makes it feel safe is it's reciprocated back and forth. Right. And so you're uh -huh. like, plus you're spending time thinking about the next thing you're going to say. Uh -huh. And so it's like, oh, okay, thanks. And then you move on yeah. to the next thing. It's not like I feel like the spotlight's only on me. It's kind right. of a back and forth. It is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's why the there's such a, a stereotype. If, if two two girls meet on the elevator and one says, I like your dress. The next one's going to turn over and say something like, I like your purse or I like your hair, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it can turn into, to a back and forth. And that can also be a way, you know, kind of like with the clapping and the bowing there, there can be a reciprocity there. So yeah, I would say just everybody take a little bit more time being conscious of the compliments that you give. And for most of us, that's not going to be as, difficult as accepting the compliments that we receive with the spirit of grace and humility, but none of this like false pretense, none of this deflection, you know, like I love, I love how many like live shows and especially like musicals and things you can watch now where it's not like we take the script and we make a movie out of it. It's like we see the actors and the audience live and we take a video and you can sit and watch the whole show, but it's, you know, it's still that kind of live experience. And I love watching the curtain calls at the end. And so 
I think that if like you really, really, really want to have some practice, like watch a show you love yeah. or watch a concert you love and watch the curtain call, because I think we can learn a ton when it is your turn to take your bow. You're not being like, oh, you guys should be clapping for these other people, right? You are taking your bow. But then there's also the time where everybody, the the main star and, you know, the the swing who showed up for like five seconds, they're all in a line. They're all bowing. And then there's a moment where they all turn and like acknowledge the musicians or they all acknowledge the sound people. So everybody gets their turn. But when it is your turn, you're not rushing through that either. I think there is something, I don't know. I mean, I never really thought about a round of applause as being a, you know, part of an American ritual, you know, so in the same way that like, you know, I know bowing to each other socially can like be huge in like East Asian cultures that like, we don't think that we have those equivalents, but we totally do. So watch curtain call if you need to, and make sure it's professionals. Like if, if you just watch the video of like the middle school theater, you're going to see a lot of kids who, who are like so self-conscious and you just, you just know, oh, their, their teacher never taught them how to do this curtain call. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I love that we got to talk about this because I think it is one of these things. It's almost like mold in the air or dust in the air. Like it, it usually doesn't cause these like acute chronic, I'm going to be in the hospital. My life's never going to be the same. It's more of just this persistent, like here's this little thing that's kind of, yeah, if I didn't have this, I'd probably be a little bit healthier and feel a little bit better, but it's never so acute that you take time to work on it. <laughs> so I'm glad we mm -hmm. had this forum to to address it. Is there anything else that you wanna add before we wrap up? Yeah, I mean, I think the one thing, there was one thing that I kind of uncovered that might be some food for thought as we go forward is just the, you know, in the end where it, it talks about what the husband says about her, which is many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. And it's funny because the, the word translated as noble like, you know, I don't, I don't, I didn't know what to make of that. What are, what are noble things? And I guess it could just mm. be anything good that you do, but these are the kind of four things that are listed in the Strong's lexicon for that word translated as noble. And it includes strength, efficiency, wealth, and army, which huh. you can do all sorts of things with that, but just maybe reflecting on what are the things that in in you that reflect strength like where are you what are your strong areas what are the what are the things where has god gifted you with strength in an area and that mm. could be any area and then efficiency i thought that was interesting too like what are the things that you do well what are ah. the things that like we talked about before that you don't have to strive for mm. to be like somebody else what are the things yeah. that you do efficiently and well Wealth, I don't think we should in any way take this to mean how monetarily wealthy are you, but where is your wealth? Like, where are you gifted? Where are you thriving? Like, what are the things that, you know, do you have a wealth of knowledge? Do you have a wealth of love? Yeah. Do you have a wealth of generosity? And then last, army. So like noble involves army. And so for me, I don't know about other people or how they would. And I think you need to sit with this prayerfully individually because God can speak to you in all different ways with these four things. But for me, army involves like, if you're noble, you're in charge of armies. So mm -hmm. to me, that brings up spiritual things like, okay, yeah. so prayer, like being a prayer warrior and being part mm -hmm. of that army or being even, you know, just like, calling God to send his angel armies to fight spiritual mm -hmm. battles. It mm -hmm. could mean being, you know, being the kind of noble, like manager of your home in some way yeah. over your family and protecting them and, mm -hmm. and, you know, those kinds of things. So I don't know. I just think it'd be interesting maybe to sit with God and, and ask him these questions about where, where do I excel and, what gifts have you given me in these four areas of strength, efficiency, mm -hmm. wealth, and army? And what do those words even mean? So just to sit on those. Yeah. yeah. I love that. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. And Jamie, thank you. And thank we you. hope you all have a wonderful day.